Now, if you were watching earlier, we asked you to take a look at this brain teaser, which was one reason the pass mark for this year's Scottish Higher Maths exam was lowered to just 34%, according to the Scottish Qualifications Agency. Now, this question, which you can see here, is about a crocodile stalking a zebra. A crocodile is stalking prey located 20 metres further upstream on the opposite bank of a river. According to the question, crocodiles travel at different speeds on land and in water. The time taken for the crocodile to reach its prey can be minimised if it swims to a particular point, which is marked by P, X metres upstream on the other side of the river. At the time taken, at T, measured in tenths of a second, equals five times the square root of 36 plus X squared plus 4 times 20 minus x. <laughs> you still with us? Uh, there are two questions to this uh, paper. The first has two parts. Calculate the time taken if the crocodile does not travel on land. Calculate the time taken if the crocodile swims the shortest distance possible, which stumped me, but apparently it's straight across the river there. Uh, in a vertical direction. And the second question, between these two extremes there is one value of x which minimises the time taken. Find this value of x and calculate the minimum possible time. So, what's the answer? Well, let's find out. Joining us now from Newcastle is astronomer and maths whiz, Richard Hornby. Richard, you're just the man we need. Um, before I get you uh, to tell us the answer to this question, um, looking at it and a lot of people have been stumped by it tonight is it unfair for scottish higher exam students to have been faced with a question like this hi christian well no it's not really unfair the problem itself actually doesn't use that many difficult skills and the skill set that it uses are ones that really higher students would be expected to know though it does put the problem in a very unfamiliar scenario a crocodile going chasing a zebra and I mean if I if I encountered a crocodile the first thing I wouldn't do is sit and calculate something I'd probably run the other way <laughs> but uh, if you actually look at the problem itself it's just a similar unknown scenario to some things that people might encounter in everyday life or in university which is what the Scottish higher exams are preparing you for yes the thing is we have GPS for this these days don't we but anyway um, uh, do you want to solve it or shall I <laughs> do you want to have a go I'll let you do it. I haven't got a whiteboard. OK. I mean, the problems we have are the... Um, it's a problem-solving question, and it really gives us students a situation which they're not familiar with. The first part of it, which I've got on my whiteboard here, is essentially a very simple substitution, which students will have already done, English students will do at a GCSE level, which is basically taking two numbers and putting them into an equation. So if the crocodile's just in the water, then you have x being equal to 20, which gives you 10.44 seconds. If the crocodile's all on land, then you've got x equals zero, so the time taken is 11 seconds. I mean, that's just a substitution problem. It was made more complicated in the exam because of the unusual units. It was measuring tenths of a second, but the answer asked it for it in seconds. And this is something that students have to get used to dealing with in everyday life because not everything is presented in the units you want to use. So, for instance, in finance, you might have billions of dollars or millions of pounds and you have to be able to convert very quickly between these units. And sorry, my earpiece has just fallen No, out, no, so that's all right. That. I'm glad you can hear us. Um, I, the, the, as I was telling people at the top, I don't know if they missed it, but so tough was this that it actually reduced people to tears uh, when they look back on the question. Um, and these hardworking students obviously were, were marked down because not many of them got it right. In fact, so many got it wrong that the board decided to cut the, the pass rate to 34%. Is that, is that unusual? It's, it's unusual that 34% is very, very low for a pass mark. However, it's not unusual that the marks are adjusted to how the students perform because the problems are testing the students' skills. And it's better to have a question that actually tests the student properly rather than one that just kind of, you know, 
makes is very easy because it doesn't show how the students can solve problems. I mean, the second half of the question, which is part B, which is a lot more complicated than the first, focuses on finding the minimum of a function like this, this little graph here. It's just finding the lowest point. And I suspect that if the students were asked to find the minimum of this function, they'd have absolutely no problems at all doing it. But because it's been set in a different context, then they find it a lot harder. And when you're in work, in industry, or you know, in academia, you don't get problems in contexts that you're 100% familiar with all the time. Yeah. I mean, so obviously, this obviously, is the yeah. work solution of it. OK. I mean, obviously, I understand all that. But for our viewers, you better just go through it. Right. Essentially, um, the, gr the graph is given here, which is a function that looks a bit like this when you actually draw it. And what the question is asking you to do is to find the lowest point. And you do that by a process of differentiation, which is an algebraic method, really, which all the students will have been taught. And then at the minimum point, this function that you've differentiated will equal zero. And then it's just a matter of solving a fairly straightforward equation to get an answer. Of course, you've got the little sting in the tail that the answer you work out is in different units to the one the exam is asking for. But once you've got the problem solved, then it's just a matter of doing a quick conversion. So you end up with 9.8 seconds as the final answer. OK, so ju just, just so I'm clear, is, it, is the crocodile quicker swimming or, or walking part what down land? Uh, the, quicker it, the crocodile is quicker swimming if he does 8 metres in the water and the rest of it on land. Right, OK. So, because that's the position when he's on land, that's the wind the water, so the minimum time is actually in between the two. OK. Well, I should get home quicker this evening, uh, Richard, thanks to your, uh, your maths that you showed me. I will plot my way home uh, by tube or by taxi, I think. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming in and explaining that, and I do hope that some of our viewers who are watching um, got the answer right, and at least if they didn't, they now know how to do it. Richard Hornby, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian.